Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Yes, unfortunately there is one more HVAC video to go. Hopefully this will be the last one. I mean, I enjoy being told I'm stupid and wrong as much as the next guy, but oh boy, I will be glad when this is over. <laughs> Anyways, what I wanted to do in this one was cover some of the stuff I didn't really cover all that well in the last couple videos, particularly the electrical portion of this as well as my line set covers. I didn't quite install them per the instructions uh, on the other side of my house. So I think I did a much better job on this one and I wanna tell you and show you that stuff. And just kinda of show you, you know, how I arranged my uh, line sets and my lines to try and hide them because, I mean, nobody really wants to see these things alongside your house. They're not, while the, the covers make things look obviously quite a bit better, it still doesn't look that great. It's a little windy, hopefully the audio sounds okay. If not, I apologize can't control the wind. First, before getting into the video, I wanted to clarify a couple things. Now, if uh, you don't really care about hearing me whine, that's fine. I'll try and put a timestamp or uh, you know a, a chapter marker or something in the video so you can just skip ahead and get into the video. But I just wanted to address a little bit in relation to some of the comments I've gotten on previous videos regarding my HVAC stuff. First of all, I'm aware I should have done things differently. That's kind of the point of me making a video called my mistake okay sorry i'm in my garage now uh yeah it was too windy out there okay as i was saying i'm aware that i should have done things differently with my hvac system i was building my house myself and i was trying to do basically everything as much as i could myself obviously i had some contractors do some things but this that was an area where i believe i was misled a little bit i don't want to put too much blame on other people but yeah, I think I was misled a little bit into thinking I could do that as effectively as I could do other things. Some things are just, you know, easier. You know, you can build walls, I can do electrical and stuff like that. That's, it's different. It's, it's not as precise kind of work, I think, you know, that often needs to be done. But I was naive and I was just trying to do everything I could. I thought I could do everything and that system and everything just turned out different than I expected it to. And like I said, I think I, it was misdesigned from the beginning. So that part I think is not my fault, but I was still naive in what I was doing. Whatever, I'm aware of all that. But in terms of now, I had a hydronic heat pump system as my only heating and cooling, which means I have no ductwork in my house. So if I was to try and install a normal system now from a contractor, that would require essentially a new construction install which wouldn't even be new construction because it's not new construction. Everything is closed up and everything else is already installed. So while HVAC may normally be like the first thing that gets installed, uh, now it's the last thing. So that means it's gonna have to now work around everything else that's already there, which is likely gonna make it more complicated, more expensive. It's gonna be more obtrusive in my basement than I wanted it to be. To get to my second floor, I'm gonna have to rip open walls and ceilings. So that's gonna be a very difficult and costly install not something we really had the finances to do. And I got a quote from a local reputable HVAC contractor that installs all types of different systems, but including a uh, similar mini split system as what I ended up going with, but from a big name manufacturer. That quote came back at like $20,000. Now, I don't know about you, I don't have $20,000 just sitting around and I wasn't gonna be taking out a loan for this. So the reason I went the way that I did is primarily due to cost. To install a regular furnace AC system with ductwork, I would have had to rip my house apart to get it installed, which would likely have been very expensive and just messy to do. It would have cost me 20 grand to have a contractor install a similar system to what I have now, and I just don't have that kind of money. What I was able to do here cost me less than half of that. So while, yeah, maybe it's not the best thing, maybe I should have done something different from the get-go, I know that, but this is where I am now. I'm sure there are better options than what I'm doing, but financially, they were just out of reach. So I went with this Mr. Cool system. I hope and I pray this works out well for us because I do not want to deal with this anymore. I've been fighting with HVAC stuff since we moved in, and I'm tired of it. So yeah, I want it to be done and over with. And for better or worse, this is what I got and this is what I'm going with. Okay, I guess that's all I wanted to say. If you're done hearing me cry about this, uh, let's get on with the video. So as you can see, I already have a couple indoor air handler units installed here. I didn't want to cover that as I already covered that in my previous video. 
What I wanted to mostly cover here was my line set installation as well as some of the stuff I missed in the actual heat pump installation. So if you've looked on Amazon, you'll notice that there's hundreds of different line set cover brands out there. Some of them look identical, as they probably are identical, but there's tons of them out there and they'll range in prices. But the one I chose, I went for for a couple of specific reasons. A big one being cost. It just seemed to be cheaper than a lot of the other ones out there. And the other reason I'll talk about later. So what I ended up going with was the Pioneer PVC line cover kit. Now this comes in two different sizes, but all I needed was the smaller size, the 3 by 2 inch. Just know that it's not exactly 3 by 2 inches, but it's in the ballpark. It comes with three couplers, this end reducer piece, one wall cap, one swivel elbow, one 90 degree elbow, this flexible piece, and four straight pieces that each measure right about 39 and a half inches long. So one of the main things I wanted to make sure I touched on in this video was the connection point uh, from the straight pieces to these couplers. In my other unit, I only installed a single screw at the coupler because that's all there was in the coupler. There was just a single hole, so that's all I did. After the fact, when I read the instructions, I saw that they told you to actually drill a new hole through the straight piece and the coupler together and then also screw that in as well. So on the other side of my house, all I have holding these up is the single screws in the couplers. Now while I don't think I'm going to have any problems, if I do, I will have to go back and fix those. But obviously adding a screw so that the straight piece is securely fastened at the coupler point as well, it's obviously making the whole line set stronger and more secure against the wall. Here I'm setting this line set up to run horizontally over to that white trim to my left. Now you gotta remember when you're running any of these things horizontally, you also have a condensate drain running alongside your line sets. And this is just gravity fed. So if you're running horizontally, you can't run level horizontally. You have to make sure you have enough of a slope to actually still provide drainage for that condensate line. Now it may not even be that noticeable depending on how long your horizontal run is, but I believe the typical standard is about one quarter inch of drop for every one foot of horizontal run. And you'll see that this short horizontal run, just like on the other side of my house, I paint the matching blue for my siding. It's not absolutely necessary, but I just want to hide this stuff as much as I can, which is the reason I do what I do with this running down the white trim. I don't want to look at this line set. I don't want to see it or notice it. So I'm just trying to hide it as best I can with what's already there on the house. This piece right here is the other main reason I chose the Pioneer mini split line set covers because this allowed me to do 45 degree angles. So I bought two of these line set cover kits and I needed both of these swivel elbows for one of my line sets. So this is something I ended up not liking and actually changed later on, but I wanted to show it because I believe it's the only shot I have of me caulking these screw holes like this. This probably isn't necessary, but I just use an indoor-outdoor clear drying caulk to try and seal up around these screws where, where I drill these holes at to make sure no water got in and messed up the siding at all. This part might have been pretty difficult for a normal person, but I'm super strong, so it wasn't too bad. Since I'm super strong, I probably could have moved this by myself, but I didn't want to show off too much. So after several days of not getting to work on this and having some time to, I guess, rethink how I wanted to finish these line sets, I ended up changing my mind and wanting to redo things a little bit. So I removed the back deck board off of this platform so that I could run these line sets underneath and through the back side. And unfortunately, the only way for me to get this flexible piece off now was to cut it off. 
which obviously ruins it and makes it useless, but thankfully I didn't end up needing it. Well, it's pretty windy out here, so hopefully my dead cat will keep uh, that from sounding terrible. So I'm at the point now where I think I'm ready to hook up my line sets to the outdoor unit. I was just standing here trying to think of everything, go over anything I might possibly be, be missing because I don't want to hook these up and then find something Oh crap, I really wish these weren't hooked up right now for me to be able to do this. But I think I'm good. I got all this stuff uncovered still because uh, once I get everything connected, the unit up and running, I got to test it by running the unit, running the indoor units, and then I'll leak check all of these connection points on the units and make sure those aren't leaking. And as long as they're good, I'll wrap them in those sound deadening pads and then I will finish insulating all that, close it up, and it should be good to go. Now I do have a bit of a special situation going on here because I actually have three indoor units that I'm going to be connecting to this one. However, I only have two ready to go right now. The third one is kind of partly a part of another project that we haven't done yet that I hope to do in the near future, but I can't really get to it and hook it up until that project is at least started. So I'm only going to be hooking up two of the three units that I have for out here. Now, according to a video from Ingram's Water and Air, which is where I purchased this, specifically talking about the Mr. Cool units, you don't have to hook up all of your units at the same time. You can come back later and add units. However, one caveat they did say, and I don't know if this has to do with the proper operation of the unit itself or perhaps efficiency, I, I don't know. But what they said was, if you are going to hook up only some of your units and not all of them yet, you do want to at least make sure that what you do have connected is at least half of the BTU capacity of your outdoor unit. My outdoor unit is 36,000 BTUs. The two units that I'm going to be hooking up are 9,000 BTUs each. So together they're 18,000, half of 36, I should be okay. My third unit will be the 18,000 BTU unit, but hopefully, like according to that video, I should be good with just my two nines. Don't take my word for it. Go watch that video or call Ingrams yourself. Something else that stinks for my situation is uh, that 18,000 BTU unit that I'm not installing yet was uh, I was doing another coupler, like two line set set up with that one as well. So I wanted to actually have this outdoor one connected and run into the house and just sitting there not terminated against anything, just leave the uh, uh, foreign material caps on there for protection. But everything out here would be done. However, the Titan outlet that I used on my other unit is apparently on back order. So I was gonna use that again here right where these uh, two water lines are that connected up to my previous unit. I'm going to completely remove those, add a PVC, like just trim block there, just like, again, like I did on the other side, and have my Titan outlet with my line set coming out right there. But I don't have the outlet yet. So, I don't know. I wanted to get this stuff done. So unfortunately, I gotta go ahead and finish this without having that stuff yet to work on. And hopefully the last thing to bear in mind is according to the instructions, if you have a multi-zone unit and you have units of different BTU capacities, the unit, indoor unit I'm talking about, with the highest capacity should be on the A line set connections down here. You've got A, B, C, and D. The highest capacity BTU unit should be on the lowest valves here. Now, if you had say like an 18, a 12, and a nine, Obviously, logically, 18, 12, and nine. I have two nines and an 18, so I'm just gonna be doing nine, nine, and then my 18 here. Okay, so I have my line sets set up how I want them to be, and I think it's pretty good. I kind of lucked out, as you can see here. So I've got all the way down, and everything just swoops nicely right there underneath my, uh, underneath my platform. I removed this last deck board so that I'd have room to do this, to bring these underneath and then up through that last uh, little joist bay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these connected. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, or just to pay attention to when you're doing this, because these can get a little confusing. Something I almost did on my last one was uh, connecting up to the wrong one. So I had one connected up. I don't remember if it was if I had the half inch or the quarter inch already connected. 
but I had one of them connected, and then when I went to connect the other one, I just wasn't paying close enough attention, and I started connecting it to the wrong one. Now, I didn't go too far to where the actual valves and stuff open, but I started threading it on, and thankfully I realized before it was, before I was fully connected. Uh, so yeah, pay attention because these are offset from one another, so it can be a little, uh, you know, confusing if you're not paying attention. So pay attention to that when you're connecting these up, that you're connecting the two that are together on the correct valves together. One thing I really like with these uh, with these units, and I think this is kind of true for, for a lot of mini split units, uh, but I like how they have this this plate that gets removed off of the this cover here for the electrical, but it leaves this plate right here, which has your half inch knockouts to uh, connect up your conduit, your weather tight fittings, whatever you're putting on here, and then but still allows you easy access to actually make all of your connections here. I think this is really a well thought out way to do this to allow you access in here while also making it easier to make these connections here. Okay, so I had to run to the store. I needed some fittings and, no, yeah, okay, just fittings to connect up our electrical right here. So as you can see, I've already made a knockout here for our power coming in. So that's right here. I uh, got some seal tight here for my 10 gauge wire. That's so I got 10 gauge wire. I'm gonna have a 30 amp breaker on the inside. This is uh, what was already connected to my other unit, and according to the instructions, that's good for this one as well. I did have to lengthen it, because uh, I actually had two conduits here, one for power, one for some signal wires coming out of the house. So I had to pull the second one off, I plugged that in the box, so along that right hand side, it's plugged now, and then I had to cut some of the, of the second conduit to extend this one to make it all the way over here. This right here is the conduit fitting. I'm going to connect my conduit uh, to my plate here. This is a uh, liquid tight fitting. This is meant for outdoor use and obviously keeping out the weather. Okay, as you can see, I got it connected here. Uh, see this, this being weather tight, it's got a gasket right in there. So once you tighten this screw, this screws onto the threads here and it's got teeth that dig in. So what most people do is you're, they'll take a, I didn't need to use a hammer or anything like that on this, but you just shove with the end of like a flat, yeah, see I got it pretty tight already, with a flathead screwdriver to get it nice and snug and it's got teeth on these uh, one sides that'll dig in there and hold the thing good and tight and then it'll squeeze that o-ring in there and give you that weather tight seal. Obviously my wires are a little bit long here. I need to cut these down because I'm only connecting up to, let's see, right here. Line one, line two, and ground right here. Okay, power's all connected up. Uh, I forgot that I needed to have some uh, spade connectors here. So I got some yellow spade connectors here to get my 10 gauge on and my ground is just a 12 gauge. So I was able to just use a blue there. That one should be just fine. But yeah, you need some uh, spade or ring lug connectors up here that I forgot about. Now I'm ready to hook up my two indoor units. And if you notice here, you've got, well, down here you can see is uh, one, two, three, A, and you have one, two, three, B, one, two, three, C, one, two, three, D. That obviously corresponds with your A, B, and C down here. So you gotta make sure you're plugging in, uh, connecting up the correct electrical connection that it corresponds to the appropriate letter. So I gotta make sure whichever unit is hooked into B down here is plugged into B on here and C as well and obviously whichever ones you're doing. This fitting right here is the fitting that I'm using for connecting my, uh, my indoor unit cord whips, whatever you wanna call them. So this is a half inch cord grip connector. Uh, previously on the other unit I'd used uh, metallic ones because that's all I saw and all I knew about. But this time when I went to the store I found these uh, non-metallic ones and they were a little bit cheaper. So I thought, all right, I'll try these. So this is what it is. This is one I've already got connected here. So you've got this cap, but then inside here, you've got this rubber seal gasket that seals right around this cord and keeps everything out. Seals it out from weather, what have you. Now these cords are a little bit big. So these, this was kind of a pain in the butt to get this through here. But then once you get to the black part, uh, getting through this, this uh, rubber gasket, this seal here, it got very tough. So this was 
This is a very snug fit on this on the black part of the wire here. But I got it on. That's a B, and I got to get the second one on for C. Okay, so before we power on the unit, we need to open up our valves, our valves here, as well as our king valves here. Now I know some of this might be a little bit of a rehash from my last video on uh, my installation, but uh, I, I know this part I kind of skimmed over. So I was trying to do a little more detail than last time. I know I went into more detail with the electrical as I think I pretty much skipped that in the entire video. <laughs> but uh, so some of this may be a little bit of a rehash, but uh, Oh well, I don't remember what all I put in the other one and I didn't go back and watch it. So we're going to go ahead and get these valves opened up, at which point we're going to power on the unit and then we're going to turn everything on and start checking up our uh, all of our fittings for leaks and then covering everything up. Alrighty. So, stop, good, cover back up. Same thing with the next one. So, sorry again, obviously my electrical's in the way here, but these are your king valves. So once you have all the valves open for your indoor units, then you need to open up these valves. Now again, I already broke these caps free, so. Same Allen wrench. Okay, it stopped. Cover back up. All right, everything here is opened up. I should be good to turn the unit on. So I'm gonna go inside, turn my breaker on, and then I'll uh, turn it on here out at the disconnect. And then I will go ahead and I'll turn one of my indoor units on. I think it's just, that's what I did the last time. I just did one at a time. I'll turn it on to the highest temperature, which is what they say. They tell you to turn it highest temperature and coldest temperature and uh, for a few minutes each and check your fittings and make sure you don't get any leaks at that point because once you actually turn the unit on you can have you'll have different pressures so you may have leaks while it's running that you wouldn't necessarily have seen when it wasn't running so you're doing this final test before covering up those uh those fittings or those connection points and uh re-insulating and being done with it getting pretty dark um, all I've got was this top one up here that's as much as I was able to actually get uh, fully insulated and done now I want to spray foam um, so I'm gonna foam inside of the wall connection in there to seal that up they give you like this clay stuff which yeah I don't think it's that good definitely not good enough and it's obviously not insulating um, I think it's even too difficult to really, with how much they give you, it, I think it's even too difficult to actually pack it in there well to block and be any sort of air seal at all. So I'm using spray foam. You gotta be careful you don't use too much. Obviously spray foam expands. And also, I would definitely make sure you use the window and door spray foam because it doesn't expand as much as the just normal like crack fill stuff. Um, that way, it hopefully won't crush your like your drain line. I've heard of some that happening to some people where they foamed inside and it actually crushed the drain line because it was it expanded too much. The pressure against the drain line crushed it and it blocked their drains. So 
window and door foam doesn't have that same pressure as it expands. That's the whole point of it, you know, for windows and doors that it won't expand and push out any window and door jams. So that's what I would definitely recommend using when you do it, if you're gonna do it. Um, and just make sure you don't go crazy with it because it does expand pretty good and you don't want it coming out too much. <laughs> I definitely don't want to go in either. So I do actually have the clay in there. So the clay's on the inside. The clay is kind of going to be my block so that it doesn't expand too far inside that if it does expand it should come out onto the outside. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this one up there done and then that one and well, you know maybe some stuff in the basement but that's probably going to be it for tonight. Unfortunately I didn't get those done but hopefully tomorrow. All right. All right we're back. I can finally get these uh, done. Hopefully done today. Uh, one thing, Mr. Cool provides you with uh, pipe insulation just like this for insulating your uh, your line set lines. Now the only issue with this is once you wrap the uh, connection points with the sound deadening tape stuff, um, it kind of makes it hard for this to get all the way around that, at least every one I've had. So uh, something else that I've used when I can't use this uh, in place of that is this Armaflex self-adhesive pipe insulation tape. This stuff uh, has worked really well. I've used this a bunch. So that's what I'm going to use. Well, a combination of these. So uh, yeah, I'll show you how I typically go about insulating these connections and getting them closed up. As you can see, the quarter inch line, I can get most of the way around here. It's all right. Obviously right here, I'm missing it. I don't want to leave this just exposed still. Uh, so the half inch, I definitely won't be able to get around but I might do something different. So what I have been doing actually in place of this altogether is just completely wrapping it with the uh, Armaflex tape, just wrapping it spiral down all the, the whole thing. So I might still do that with the half inch here. Kill? I don't really know. Uh, I, I think I should have probably done this uh, the opposite way. Started at the bottom and worked my way up. That way uh, this shingling would have been uh, the proper way as this is upside down. Now I don't anticipate water getting into here, but I guess if it were to ever get in here and get onto this piping, if it was shingled better, it'd be less to worry about. Now it's not that it's going to damage anything, but still. And with this stuff, I guess I tend to err more on the side of uh, more rather than less. So as long as I get my cover on here, yeah, that's all I'm really worried about. Making sure I get these uh, well insulated and uh, I can still get my cover on. Hey, that's going to be it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm glad to be done with this. I hope I don't have to deal with this stuff for a long, long time. Thank you to everybody who's been liking and subscribing to the videos. I genuinely appreciate it. I really do. It actually is pretty difficult to try and do projects like this as well as recording it and making sure you're getting all the footage you need to do it. So the more of you that like and subscribe and watch the videos, the more it's going to help me out. So thank you very much. So thank you again. I hope this was beneficial for some of you out there. And uh, I'll see you next time, guys. God bless. If you like this video, be sure to watch some of my other stuff. Maybe I... Do I got it up over here yet? I don't know. That's... Is that long enough? Yeah, okay.